All right, this next young man is our featured speaker for today. That's Marion County Judge Executive David Daughtery. David, of course, is a 1986 graduate of Marion County High School. He attended St. Catherine and Eastern Kentucky University. Before being elected to his first term in 2014, spent several years in the banking business, as you may remember. He and his wife, Renee, have triplets, Ben, Caitlin, and Samantha. Let's welcome Marion County Judge Executive David Daughtery. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. I wasn't nervous till my mom showed up while ago. So. <laughs> that was kind of unexpected, but uh, uh, we did this last year, and, and uh, a lot of the same things are, are going on. I'd first like to thank the chamber for having me here today. Uh, last year, I said that I thought this was one of the best places to, to live and raise a family, and I, that hasn't changed a bit. I think we still live in a great community, and uh, it is a great place to raise a family. Uh, this is my fourth year in my first term, and I have to say this is probably going to be one of the toughest years um, due to what you all are seeing on the news and, and a lot of people in this community, the teachers and the county employees and, and county budgets and school board budgets, and uh, all of us are facing a, a really tough time uh, this next coming year if things are not done differently than what they're proposing. Um, just to, to give you some comparisons, the current rate of our retirement match in Marion County for our employees is 19.18. The proposed, the proposed rate would go to 28.05. The current rate of hazardous duty pay is 31.55. It's projected to go to 47.86. Uh, this would hit our budget in amount of about $500,000 annually. Annually, every year, it would increase that much. So, uh, you know, it, it, again, like I say, it's not only affecting us, it's our school boards, our, our uh, state workers, everything. It's, this is a huge, huge uh, issue we have right now, and, and, and every county across the state is, is facing the same thing. Uh, Marion County is fortunate that we do have some reserve to, to, to handle it for a while, but, I mean, it's, we've worked hard to get that reserve, and it's, it's kind of a disappointing to have, you know, something like this happen to us. So I do encourage us to, or you all, to contact our legislators, Jimmy Higdon and Brandon Reed, to, to voice your concerns on these on these issues. Uh, there is a bill on the table right now that's that would ease the pain for the for the county employees this first year, first over a five year period, where they would phase it in as House Bill or Senate Bill 66. And that would be where it would be phased in 2% a year over the next five years, which it's, it's better, but it's still not good. It's not great by any means. So, you know, those are some of the things that, uh, that are, are going to be tough for every budget this year. Uh, in the past, we haven't had that, as John G's here to say, it's been, we've had a good, good easy budget to, to make. You know, this year we're going to have to make some adjustments. Uh, on the bright side of it, Marion County is at 3.2% unemployment rate, which is one of the lowest in the state. Uh, that being said, uh, there's about 500 jobs uh, in Marion County. Terry Thomas with Career Centers here, she can verify that as well. It's a bit busy place, our Career Center is very busy. So if you guys know anybody needing a job or looking for a job, please send them to our Career Center. Uh, it's open five days a week. and. Uh, if they got any questions about anything, please call Terry and, and hopefully we can, we can help them find a job. With that being said, uh, that's a good thing for, for the county. With low unemployment comes a larger workforce, which means people con contributing to occupational tax. Uh, we're looking at another record year of occupational tax. Last year we were right at 3.5 million. It's looking like it'll be about 3.6 this year. So. You know, again, that's been our saving grace in Marion County. I know the previous judge, and John G. and Dave Hergen, uh, did that program, and it's been, it's been our saving grace. I mean, that's the truth. The working people in this community are what are keeping us where we're at today. So I do want to thank everybody that's working in our community. Uh, Marion County, together with all our abundant occupational tax and health reserves, and in shape to weather whatever comes from this pension reform, like I said, we, we can weather this storm, but if we don't, if it stays 
the way they're they're saying we're going to have to make some adjustments. I mean, some you got to raise revenue or cut costs. That's the only way to, to get through it. So uh, last year we uh, we mentioned the jail. The jail was paid off this past year. Uh, it was four hundred twenty thousand dollars. We paid it off a year early to save some interest. So uh, you would think that uh, that would be enough to to help us do something next year. But with the rising costs at our jail. Uh, it's kind of absorbed most of that uh, uh, money. Uh, and again, that's something else that, that people don't realize. We have not have a, had a per diem for a state inmate since 2004. It's been the same price for 2004. I mean, if you could imagine your own home going to the grocery in 2004 versus 2018, it's, it's quite a bit of difference. Uh, so it's it's really a tight margin at the jail to be able to to uh, you know years ago our jail did make money and it was very profitable and done really really good but uh, another problem with that is uh, we we are seeing a, a lot, lot larger amount of local inmates local people in our jail and that being said we don't we don't make any money on local inmates. Uh, our average counts about 55 for Marion County people. So that takes the ability to draw revenue from the state off of that. So uh, the main reason for that is, as probably all of you all know, is the drug epidemic that we have in our community. Uh, it, it is a real. Uh, it's not just in Marion County, it's in Washington County, it's in Taylor County, it's, it's across the state. I mean, it's, it, it really is an epidemic. Uh, We've got some judges running here today. It's, uh, it's, there's a few of them here, I think. You know, that's part of, uh, I know, the cost of incarceration is really expensive and, and is part of the problem. Uh, we, we Jerry, the jailer Baylor, uh, Brady and myself and, and several are trying to encourage some alternative sentencing, possibly some home incarceration. You know, uh, most the sheriff is trying to arrest people and. Uh, Judges are trying to put them in jail, and, and it's 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 a cost of burden on us. Which that's what they're they're doing their job. I'm not saying that, but if we could look at any alternative sentencing, it would really really help our jail budget with, with that. But uh, again, we have a great jail. Um, local residents are again the, one of the main. Jailer Brady and myself have also looked into the possibility of uh, a reentry facility at our at our existing property that we have down there. Uh, they're working on a uh, issue right now where there's possibility of inmates prior to getting out of jail that they'll be able to be released and work in our communities <coughs> under supervision. Uh, that would also give them the ability to retain some of their earnings so when they get out of jail they do have some funds to not go back and be a repeat offender. So again, talk to your legislators about that that has been presented and we, we are looking into doing that. Like I say, Jalen Brady and myself, and, and he's really, really worked hard to try to do something on this because these folks that are on drugs, jail's not the answer. They have to have a program. Rehabilitation is about the only way to, to, to solve this problem. Get them help is what we need to do. Uh, there's one other issue that we've uh, called a little heat over this past few weeks is uh, our recent land for the CD and D landfill that we had out on uh, off the bypass there, uh, it's filled up. So we were looking to possibly do another landfill, and we come to the conclusion it was going to cost us about six hundred thousand dollars to do that, which is very expensive for five or six years, which is typically the life of those those landfills. So. Uh, we contacted Nelson County, which is where we take our sanitation, our garbage today, and have been for several years, and they have agreed to take it at the same rate. So what we've done is we've staged a land, uh, uh, receiving station at our current transfer station, is it right beside where we're at now, and they've agreed to do it. So if you do have the material, we do charge $10 a cubic yard, which is not even breaking even to get it over there. So. Uh, we do still provide that service, but we do have to charge for it. Uh, but the six hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, six hundred thousand to do it for five or six years, just seemed really, really 
it really have to do that. Um, let's see more about the J over here. Again, there's some services that people overlook that we do get from the jail. Uh, we use roughly 20 inmates in our community a day. If we had to hire those employees, it would be a substantial amount of money. So our jail, you know, we do transfer a lot of money into it, but we do receive a lot of services out of it. Uh, roughly a half a million to six hundred thousand dollars a year is what we receive. If you if you figure it up at what it would cost us to do those programs. At the end of the day, we know we have some challenges facing us in the near future, but what I want the citizens of Marion County to know is that we're in a good place, and as your county job, judge, I take my job very ser seriously to protect what we have in the best interest of, our, of the future, and thank you so much for having me today. Has anybody got any questions at all? Did I answer everybody's questions? <laughs> <laughs> John Thomas always said a short speech is a good speech. Where's John at? <laughs> uh, something else we are working on is uh, the uh, fire uh, ratings. <coughs> We're waiting on a couple more surveys from our water companies. And hopefully that issue will people out in the county that are having a higher fire rate, we hopefully we're going to get that reevaluated and our, our uh, rate will go down is what we're shooting for. So that is in process to do. Uh, any, any questions? Are there still any talks to build like an expo center, you know, multi-purpose building, or is that? It still is. It's still being talked about a lot, and I know we, we do need to do something. But with this this retirement, the unknown there, it would be it'd be kind of dangerous to do that. Uh, I would love to. I think it would be a great asset to our community and a good draw for our community to draw the people here. That's part of the problem. Our housing housing market's great right now, um, but we just don't have enough people living here. Maybe something like that would, would help draw that. But it's still being talked about. But like I say, with this retirement and everything going on, it's it's going to be tough to do. What's the latest on the issues with your building, with the Hurricane building, the columns, whatnot? Uh, we're in the process of bidding those columns out. Larry Smith's going to remove them probably in couple, two or three weeks, we hope, after we get the, we're getting someone to look at them and make sure whatever they, we're not going to take them down that somebody can see what we got to replace them with. But it looks like we're going to go with the fiberglass material. So hopefully we'll have that fixed. Similar, similar to what the city hall has on their building is what we're going with. They will be fluted. They should look identical to what's there. It's, it's the plane. The county will have to pay for that? That's, that's yet to be determined. We're, we're trying to, uh, not to have to, but uh, if we wait till all that's done, we could be without columns for many, many years. So we're, we're, we are working on that too, Jay. Does anybody else have any questions? Good deal. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.